Hi, I'm Lisa Gualteri. I'm an assistant professor at Tufts University School of Medicine, and I'm going to be teaching you about competitive analyses, what they are, why you want to do them, and how to go about doing them. So first, what is a competitive analysis? It's a systematic way of looking at what your competitors do for similar types of apps to the one that you're designing. I use the word competitor loosely because sometimes these are your best friends, but in a sense you're always competing against them because you want people to download your app instead of their apps. And next, why do you want to do a competitive analysis? Basically, if you do a competitive analysis, you can learn an enormous amount about what other organizations are doing well that you might want to borrow from what they're doing poorly that you want to avoid. And also, you can learn how to distinguish yourself given your expertise or your organizational expertise. So doing one is really valuable. It's not an enormously time-consuming process. And conveniently, I'm giving you a worksheet to use for doing it. When you conduct a competitive analysis, all you need to use is the information that's available on the app websites, in app reviews, in app stores. So it's really just that surface level. If you want to do a really in-depth competitive analysis, you can actually download the apps and you can really use them and you'll learn a lot more. The thing that you typically do not have is what went on behind the scenes. And a great example of this is a lovely image of a George Lucas script that was used for one of his Star Wars movies. And what you see is this beautiful, slick, well-produced movie. But when you see the script, you see what went on behind the scenes. Typically, you never know that. And all of the discussions, the decisions, the failed attempts at creating this app that's now available for download. But sometimes you wish you knew all the decisions that led to this app. So what I want to describe now is the process of conducting a competitive analysis. And the first, st the starting point, not surprisingly, is that you need to identify what are the competing apps. Sometimes you know that off the top of your head. And there are a lot of ways of finding out through doing searches. The, m the most productive way of learning what your competition is, is to think about how are your personas going to be looking for apps. So if you've got a set of four personas and you're designing a weight loss app, what are the terms they're going to be using? And what are the sites that they're going to be going to to search for apps? Or where might they be seeing a review of a bunch of weight loss apps? And that's going to give you the best information about who your competition is. While you may end up with a pretty long list of competing apps, you typically want to pick the top three or four. And you might want to pick somewhat different ones to do a really thorough competitive analysis. So what I provide you with is a template that you can use for doing a competitive analysis. It has 20 areas, and while that might sound daunting, it's really not that incredibly time consuming to do. So the first thing is just the very simple, what's the name of the app, what's the logo, and what are the URLs for the website or for where it is in app stores. And the reason for the URLs is that you'll go through this process, but you may want to go back and check some things in more depth later. So it's a lot easier to have that information. Second, what is the objective for the app at a glance? So if you go into that app store, say, what are you going to see and what's immediately going to jump out at you? Because a lot of times people don't read that information. They're making a pretty split second decision and you want to see what is that decision based on. Next, third, you want to look at what are the purpose and the goals of the app in more depth. And you also want to see, does that match? Because sometimes you can have a problem that you think an app is one thing and you download it and you start using it and you find out it's actually something else. So that kind of mismatch is very informative.
but to have a real clear sense of the purpose, the goals of the app, um, and what kind of um, more in-depth information can you get from any of the descriptions that are available. Fourth is who's the target user population. Sometimes that's given explicitly, sometimes it's implicit through some imagery, through testimonials, um, through some additional information like that. What you'd really like, of course, is usage data, but that's very difficult to get. Fifth, what kind of ratings and reviews are there, and what do you learn from that? Are there a lot? Are there a few? What kind of information is pe are people giving? And that's highly informative. Sixth, downloads and use. It's pretty easy to get information about downloads. It doesn't really tell you very much because people download apps and don't even open them, or they use them once and then they discard them. What you'd love to get is retention data, but it's very, very difficult to get that. Seven, what kind of research is behind this? Were there evidence-based guidelines that were used? Were there experts involved? And really understanding that can be enormously beneficial because after all, this is a health app that you're designing. Eight, is one of the larger categories, which is what's the overall design? What kind of impression does that give you initially? Does it look professional? Does it look modern? Does it look appropriate for the purpose of the app? Another large category is nine, the layout and the navigation. So is it easy to use? Is it easy to figure out what options you have available to you? And that's really important because people can get pretty easily frustrated and they can abandon an app for that reason alone. 10. What kind of branding and external affiliations are there? Is it apparent who created the app and why? Is there any kind of organizational branding, accreditation, sponsorship, advertising, and what impression does that convey? 11. What kind of user-generated content is there? And going through and seeing what is there text, is there graphics, is there audio, is there video, is there a blog, is there ask the expert, glossary, quiz, and really kind of cataloging what's there and looking at the types of information that's being conveyed. And following on that, number 12 is what kind of information is there about authors and oversight? So in particular, does expert generated content clearly identify the author when it was created and when it was last reviewed? Is there any kind of advisory board or clinician involvement? Because once again, it is a health app. And for some people, that's really important to have that kind of assurance that it isn't just a person who went and developed something. 13, literacy and readability. Because again, it's a health app, so you wanna make sure that it's going to work for the health liter literacy skills of your target audience and that they're going to be able to read and understand and use the information in the app. 14 is user-generated content. So starting with the ratings, the reviews, any kind of um, likes, user-generated content that you can include in discussion forums or comments, also, what kind of ties are there with any social media, content sharing, and so on? Uh, and then 15, what kind of policies are explicitly stated in terms of the how information can be used? Uh, 16 is the registration process, if there is one. And what can you do without registering? And what is the registration process like? What kind of information do they ask? And do they explain how the information is going to be used? Because sometimes if it's asking really personal information, you want some kind of assurance that it's not going to be, say, splashed all over Facebook or Twitter. And sometimes it's really helpful to understand, I'm asking your height and weight because this is going to be used to calculate how many calories you burned, for instance. Uh, next. 17 is what is the cost? And there may be a cost to download the app, but there are also sometimes different versions so that you can pay uh, or you can have a free version, but then you can pay to get premier features. 18 
is what does this tie into? Are there other devices? Are there websites? So just having that big picture. 19, what kind of support is available? If you have problems, is there somebody that you can contact? Is there some kind of support website? Especially if you purchased an app, if, you, if you're committed to using it, if you run into a problem or if you have a suggestion, you want to be able to express that and know that it's going to get read or addressed in some way. And then finally, your overall assessment. What are the best and the worst features of the app? Having gone through this process for an app, what really jumps out at you? When you've done this for three or four apps, the final stage of doing a competitive analysis is assessing what did you learn for the design of your own app? What are some of the features that you really want to include because you're impressed by what other apps did? What are some of the things that you want to avoid? And then finally, what do you see as the real opportunities for distinguishing yourself or your organization through this app? And this is not just for the design process, but this is also for the marketing process because you've learned an enormous amount about how these organizations are marketing their apps. And if you design a successful app, if you don't have a marketing campaign, then nobody's going to know about it. So you really need to think about that. And going through this process is teaching you an enormous amount about how to market it effectively. So once again, conducting a competitive analysis is not an incredibly difficult or time-consuming process, but it's an enormously valuable one in designing um, a successful health app. I'm Lisa Gualteri. I'm an assistant professor at Tufts University School of Medicine. Thank you.